It's the Super Sport 600s from the Adelaide Masters this week on RPM. And at half term, Keith Farmer is ahead in points, but only just as Gary Jeffers is a mere four points behind. The Super Sport 600 action has been particularly hectic this season. Let's just remind ourselves of some of the highs and lows so far. Some more rough and tumble from the super sports over 10 laps of Mondello's national circuit. Mondello have attracted another big name to the super sports 600s. Josh Elliott, who races in the European super stocks, is on pole. Richie Ryan on his triumph, and Gary Jeffers, a championship contender, is next. Then Chris Elkin, a newcomer, and championship leader Keith Farmer. So we're on board now with the Bridgestone Cup leader, Sean Hurley. Almost ready to go now. Marshall waves the red flag to show the all clear and sprints out of the way. Watch the red lights there out and away we go. And it looks like number 83, Richie Ryan, gets a fabulous start on the Triumph 675 as he gets the whole shot into turn one. Watch out for Keith Farmer, always very aggressive down into turn one with a big shunt on the outside there. Bikes everywhere. It looks like someone's planted Yamahas and Hondas in the first turn. Yeah, big contact there, well, well back, and a lot of riders involved there. The Marshals are there, everybody on their feet. And they seem okay, but the red flags are out. We're going to watch this on replay. Watch at the top of the screen. Two bikes touch, elbow to elbow. Now they're carrying way too much speed. They're locked up. They can't stop. And they collect two or three other bikes. But the gravel does its job and stops the bikes well before the barriers. Yes, and it's a red flag, so uh, it's going to be a restart for this one. So all those riders are okay. They really do, yeah. So red lights are on again. We're getting ready to go. The red lights are out. Can Ryan do it again this time? They're all getting good starts. Watch out for 303. Keith Farmer looking very aggressive down into turn one on the inside. The white bike, and look how late on the brakes he is and sends everybody else wide. I don't care. I'm taking the lead down here into turn one. And it's that man again. Keith Farmer streaks into the lead of this one, but not, he's not going to have it all his own way. This time we've got a newcomer to Mondello Park. It's number zero, Josh Elliott. Josh Elliott rides in the uh, European Supersport uh, class. Uh, a huge amount of experience, but we haven't really seen very much of him this side of the uh, water. Well, he might have got bullied out of the way at turn one, but he was fighting back on a long side at Adelaide turn two, and he's doing the same now. Coming down into the S is looking very threatening. I think he wants a little bit of revenge for that uh, bullying down at turn one. And it's hard to believe this kid is uh, only 18 years of age riding the blue Yamaha R6. The farmer with a bit of work to do now. He's not going to be able to run away with this one because Elliot right with him now as they come out. Up to up corner and down to complete lap one. First two absolutely together and good battles all the way down this capacity field now, Mandela Park. And back on board with Sean Hurley down the start finish straight. Sean hard on the brakes for turn one here. Oh, and two riders go around the outside. So Sean Hurley uh, getting taught a lesson into turn one there. Well, I wonder, was he? The track looking a little bit green and Sean Hurley, the Bridgestone Cup leader. So maybe he's got one eye on the points. Doesn't want to do any heroics. I'm sure he'll fight back now as soon as this settles down. Doesn't want to get involved in any early antics in this race. No, I think he might be right there. He's, uh, he's got one eye on the prize for the championship. So uh, Sean Hurley may be thinking the... Uh, Slight backing off would be the uh, honour of the day. Back at the front now, Keith Farmer just hanging on and no more from Josh Elliott. Elliott really making him work for it there. Out of the S's boat, right out to the outside. Always a sign when they use the curve that Ryder is really trying. And they come out of Dunlop Corner now, both using that curve again on the exit. In fact, Elliott right out to the very edge and almost kissing the grass. Indeed, and Richie Ryan having a great run in third position there. Right, hot on his heels though is... Uh, Jeffers, that looks like it is Jeffers with a run down the inside, but Ryan just contains him there at turn one. And a great battle here at the front of the field from uh, Keith Farmer and uh, Josh Elliott. Yeah, Josh Elliott on the blue Yamaha R6 really pushing, trying to get, get Keith Farmer, force him into a mistake. Keith's been forced into a few mistakes this year, so uh, Josh Elliott trying to do the same. Yeah, Farmer hanging on in front. He's got about a two, three bike length lead as they come up over the crest and back down towards the off camber left under the start of the S's here on the national track of Mondello Park. You have to bank back over to the right. And the first left-hander, of course, is crucial for the speed you can carry through this right-hander and then all the way up the hill to the last corner. 
Yeah, these two guys have a wealth of experience between them. Even though they're only kids, Josh Elliott is 18 and I think Keith Farmer is about 21. Uh, they sound like old men, but uh, at that age they've raced in the European British Championships and uh, World Championships, so these guys are uh, at the top of the game. Well, Elliot really shadowing uh, Farmer at this stage of the race, possibly looking a little bit quicker, do you think? Yeah, they're down into the 54s here already, so these guys are really pushed onwards. They're nearly on the Superbike lap records, but uh, if we look on the screen there, we can see some specks of uh, rain. Yeah, it looks like uh, the track looking a little bit shiny before the race started. That certainly won't help things, but this battle really looks like it's going to shape up into a good one at the front because Keith Farmer hanging on, but Josh Elliott, not sure if he's just hanging on to the back of him or is he sizing him up or waiting for a big move coming up here. That's definitely the rain on the second camera, so these guys are definitely going to take the, uh, the easier option. Maybe they'll roll off and maybe the braver ones will keep pushing on, but uh, the braver ones can pay the uh, price with the uh, visit to the gravel. Well, I don't think anyone at the front is going to uh, ease off at all. It doesn't look like it. They're all pushing on, but there's a big, big gap after the top five. A big gap. We can't see anybody else on the approach to Dunlop Corner. Here they come now down to start another lap of Mondello. No, it's uh, Richie Ryan in third position. Gary Jeffers a fine fourth position. And Christian Elkin joining the battle here for the uh, top five. So Christian Elkin on the Triumph 675 having a really good outing this weekend. Yeah, very distinctive looking bike that Triumph. And uh, the single exhaust high up right almost behind the rider's back as they head out towards turn three. So uh, these three really embroiled in a good battle here. Richie Ryan's just hanging on. Jeffers, of course, very much involved in the championship. And a bit like Hurley, he'll be uh, doing mathematical calculations in his head. Doesn't want to get involved in any trouble. And there's no calculations here. These guys are right on the edge of the racing limit here. These guys are pushing, pushing hard at the front of it. They really are now, and Farmer hanging on. And we wonder, as Josh Elliott, is he going to wait? Is he going to have a go? He hasn't got long to go because he's just coming up to start the last lap. There's the flag. 1.24 miles to go. Can Elliott do anything about this one? Elliott's going to have a go. He's 18 years of age. He's got the world on his shoulders. He wants to win. He's not going to give up. Keith Farmer's a fabulous rider, but Josh Elliott really wants to win this one. Well, he's going to have to make it soon because that's turn two. Adelaide out of the way. Down to the double apex. Right-hander now. Here they come. Really quick entrance to this one. Doesn't make the move here. Is he just sizing him up? Is it going to be on the way up the hill? Maybe he's going to wait until Dunlop, the last lap, the last corner in this one. And these two kids are really pushing at the front of the field. No one wants to give uh, in to the other. Elliot now just uh, three corners to go. The left-hander is one of them. He's all over the back of the leader, Farmer now. Back to the right. It must be last corner, last left. This is his last chance now as they come up the hill for the last time. He's going to go to the inside, or is he? Goes out the inside as late as he can be on the brakes and slices down the inside. Oh, he's going to run a bit wide, and it looks like it's Keith Farmer hard on the gas. So who's going to get the run to the line? Oh, Farmer just about takes it back. Great stuff and a grandstand finish there. The two young professionals dominated that one, and Sean Hurley is the Bridgestone Cup winner. Leading championship there now by quite a few points there, so hopefully we'll do the job and wrap it up. We got a real good start, and then it was stopped, and I just thought, uh, no, my luck, I'll not get a good start, but I got another good start, and uh, had a wee dice with Josh, and Josh kept me honest the whole way through it, so it's good to get me back into 600 form, you know, for next week at the BSB, and... Uh, he had last uh, corner he had a dive at me and so I knew he was deep so I squared back on him and uh, as he's super stock I had the, you know, the rev on him so that was a good race, he kept me well honest. We have more Super Sports 600 action after the break. Can Keith Farmer do the double? We'll just have to wait and see. Welcome back. We've been watching the Super Sport 600 stars in action here at the Adelaide Masters and there'll be more to come from them shortly. But who will be the next big thing to come from this country? Here's two young men who are making quite the impression. This is the one to five for you. I've actually won the championship in this thing already so half like with two rounds to go like so it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've won 13 out of 14 races this year so far, like, and came second in the other one. But this is my first year in this bike, so it is, so it's... And what age are you? I'm 12. And this is your brother. Your brother races too. Yeah. Tell me, how's things going for you today? Yeah, things are going good for me today. In the first race, I actually won. Well done. And how's your season been going so far? Um, the season's been going quite strong at the start of the season, but unfortunately at the last Mandela Masters, I actually crashed and uh, ended up injured for three months. So this is my first race back since injury. Most definitely two to watch, and there'll be plenty to watch over the next 12 laps of the second Super Sport race. 
We're taking the highlights, and again, it's Josh Elliott on pole. Can he convert it into a win this time? Again, Richie Ryan is alongside him, and Jeffers needs to keep the race one winner, Farmer, in check. But Chris Elkin could be a problem. And here's the real problem, Keith Farmer. On board with Sean Hurley on the Yamaha R6, and also Christian Elkin on the Triumph 675, so we're guaranteed some fun and excitement from these cameras. The red lights are on, the marshal getting out of the way. Who's it gonna be? Farmer from the second row of the grid has got a little bit of work to do, but can he bully his way back down the inside again as they head towards turn one? And what a great start from Josh Elliott. Josh Elliott just lets the brakes off and runs into, oh, he's touched him. Farmer was right the way around the outside, but Richie Ryan just connected with him as he straightened up. Ryan is a big loser there and has fallen well, well back, but I think Farmer's recovered to third place and is challenging for second already. He is indeed, and look at Richie Ryan's back down about 10th place, so you're right, Richie Ryan, the big loser of that one, but Josh Elliott streaks into the lead of this one. He did, but Farmer somehow recovered. I'm not sure how he should have been out in the grass. Look at this, he's up to second place, he's displaced Jeffers, and already he's having a go for the lead as they come down into the S's. Uh, Keith Farmer's an ex-supermoto rider, so I think that's a normal start in supermoto, so he's probably well used to this one. Well, you can guarantee action down at Turn 1 with Keith Farmer's on the grid. Can't you? He was well back. He was on the second row, but the gap was big. Down the outside, almost took the lead. Connected with Ryan, had to back out of it, but already he's right back in there. That's one thing you can say about these two kids. There's no shortage of bravery between either of them. So back on board with Sean Hurley. And again, as Sean Hurley said in his interview, he just needs to wrap it up and finish here, and uh, we'll put one hand on the, on the championship for him. He's been doing very well. Doesn't need to get involved in these dog fights early on. Staying out of everyone's way today. Usually very aggressive, not so much today. No, I think the championship is playing big on Sean's mind this weekend, so Sean a little more tame than we've ever seen him before. Yeah, just letting these guys get ahead. He doesn't want dog fights. doesn't want to be touching anyone today because it's all about the points. Back in the front now, and the battle really resuming. There's that triumph that we spoke about earlier. Is that a difficult machine to ride around here? No, it's a beautiful machine, and I have to say to you, I would really like a go one, so if anyone has one, you're more than welcome to offer me. Well, very distinctive sound, and we'll see that when we go on board with that bike. And uh, as we said earlier, the exhaust, the bike, very, very different looking to all the rest. Very distinctive and uh, just hanging onto that bike as he comes up over the crest and heading back down towards the S's now. Can't do anything about Jeffers at this stage, though. Championship contender Gary Jeffers having a great run here in third position, fighting off the uh, charging Christian Elkin on the Black Triumph 675. Well, third place is pole position. If anything goes wrong, up the front, isn't it? And they're really having a go already, so that could happen. We're definitely going to see some action up here because uh, Elliot's hanging on, but right with him is 303 Farmer, and they go by our camera as one. On board now with Christian Elkin on this Triumph Daytona we spoke about. That's Gary Jeffers up front. Jeffers into the apex, but carries too much speed, goes wide. We almost go with him, but back on the power and make up a place on the way to turn two. So great stuff there from Christian Elkin. Let's just have a listen to the sweet motor on this Triumph. Very distinctive sound now, very, very different, but obviously working well as Gary Jeffers just found out on the exit of turn one. Yeah, big mistake from Gary there running wide, but he's hot on the heels of uh, Christian Elkin again, so Gary Jeffers certainly hasn't given up on that third position. We're getting to the stage of the season now where guys like Gary Jeffers are at the very top of these championship tables, and they have to bear that in mind. They don't want to get involved in a fight that could end up badly for them. But these two don't care. Back at the front is still Josh Elliott, broadside from uh, Keith Farmer. He's also broadside, so these guys riding the wheels off it. Christian Elkin in third position, hot on his heels, uh, Gary Jeffers, and uh, Richie Ryan broadside as well into turn one. Well, Ryan will, uh, Ryan will be furious with himself. He had that problem at the start, knocked himself way back. We know he's got loads of pace, and he's trying to close the gap, which probably isn't really on for these guys up front. No, but Christian Elkin still leads there from Gary Jeffers in the fourth position. So Christian Elkin beginning to stretch a little advantage now over Gary Jeffers. Maybe that rain is beginning to fall again. We're not quite sure. Yeah, they're a little bit more separate. The happy gap now, two or three bike lengths. But Jeffers later on the brakes, down into the left-hander here, right on the exhaust pipe of that Triumph again. And in fact, uh, Elkin going a little bit wide there, the first bit of the S's, and that generally costs time going up the hill. I think he's under pressure. Gary Jeffers has shown him a wheel any chance he can get, so uh, Christian Elkin really, really under pressure here. Jeffers having a real go there in the straight, but they're back to the leaders now, and uh, Josh Elliott with a little bit of a gap as well, but the bike beginning to skip around under him. And Josh Elliott looks like he's beginning to streak a little bit of a lead here from Keith Farmer. Keith Farmer won't be used to this, seeing guys pulling away from him on the circuit. No, Farmer very aggressive. If he gets anywhere near him again, we're sure he'll have a go, but he's not quite close enough just yet. Two, three bike lengths. This is a little bit different, though. This is a closer one. Elka just holding off Gary Jeffers, who really wants that bike. Look at him having a look around the outside of turn three. If he can switch back to the inside, he might be quicker on the way up the hill. 
and a great bit of riding from Christian Elkin. He just ran Jeffers just slightly wide, made him work for all the track, and he regains his uh, third position. So great run there from Christian Elkin. Yeah, this is a great battle. A lot of tactics involved, almost like a game of chess. Listen to this triumph now as they head up towards Dunlop Corner. Out over the curves. Is that going to cost him time? He's hard on the brakes now to Dunlop Corner. And indeed, he's been passed down the inside by Jeffers that time. He's going to try and fight back on the main straight. And that's definitely Spitzer in on the visor. We can see it in the rev counter that the rev counter spun up very quickly. So the track is definitely getting wet. It's going to make it even harder, but he's closing in again on the brakes. Really wants this place back. And they're both gone wide again, well away from the curve there down turn one. Jeffers obviously having big brake problems at the end of the start finish straight. I think maybe the rain has put them off slightly as well. It's same mistake for Jeffers. Went wide there at turn one. As you said, it's getting a little bit wet out there. And Elkin straight back past him again. And the triumph leads this battle once again. Yeah, Jeffers with a championship in mind, so he's going to be a little bit more gentle than Christian Elkin. So Christian Elkin with it all to gain and Jeffers with it all to lose. Well, I think Jeffers forgot all about the championship going down into turn one a little bit too late in the brakes. Couldn't get the bike stopped out wide. And in fact, they both went a little bit wide as they did the first time, but Elkin was the first to recover. And Richie Ryan now beginning to catch the boat. Yeah, they better look behind him because Richie Ryan is gaining up on them. But back at the front, it's uh, Josh Elliott streaking away into the lead. This one, he's, uh, he's really broken the charge of Keith Farmer in second position. So Josh Elliott proven to be the quality of this field. Well, there's Hurley making up a place. We said this might happen. He uh, had to stay out of all the trouble early on, becoming a little bit more aggressive now and beginning to pick off places down into turn three. First apex of turn three takes a place just before that. And the leader, Josh Elliott, streaks into view. This guy doesn't even know the track is wet. He's going around here that quick. Look at the lap times. Everyone else has dropped off three or four seconds, but Josh Elliott is pushing to the limit really is still pushing very hard look at the gap those two are back markers ignore them for the purposes of results and look at the gap back to second place that's 303 Keith Farmer nothing he can do about Elliot at this stage in fact it's checkered flag time and it's a dominant victory for Josh Elliot first time to Mondello Park and he's taken a win Farmer in second Elk in third Jefferson fourth and Richie Ryan recovering to fifth Sweet revenge for Elliot with Chris Elkin joining Elliot and Farmer on the podium. We're getting better all the time. I mean, we've uh, seconds, we've best results so far, and third today, so I'm looking for a win next time, definitely. I got in the first turn first that time, and uh, just unfortunately, Richie Ryan sort of pushed me away and he fell off. But other than that, you know, Josh has been on it really, really well this whole weekend, so, you know, full credit to him. Yeah, the Yamaha's been handling really good around here. Uh, Keith, Keith's a real good rider, so it's been good to battle with him. And um, yeah, you know, it is, it, we came here just to basically get set up for the next uh, two weeks' time at Nurburgring. So uh, yeah, I'm leaving here happy. And so to the grand finale of the Adelaide Masters weekend. Cameron Donald is the man to beat, and Jack Kennedy, the one who would dearly love to beat him. So we're on board with Christian Elkin in the uh, Mondello Masters final, a mixture of 600 and 1,000 cc machines. So this is going to be an exciting race. Red lights are on, they're getting ready, and away goes Kennedy with a cracking start again, becoming a trademark of Jack Kennedy's here at Mondello Park, and he leads the pack down into turn one. Great start from Jack Kennedy, but Cameron Donald tries to go around the outside, so a brave move there from the Australian. And does Cameron Donald pull that move off? Not quite, it's still Kennedy, but only just they're almost alongside each other there as they head out of turn two, Adelaide corner. And it's Kennedy in the lead on the Yamaha R1. In second position on the silver and red uh, Honda CBR 1000, it's Cameron Donald. And in third position, it looks like it's uh, Keith Farmer on the CBR 600. Well, interesting to watch the two leaders. Kennedy's bike certainly looks a lot softer than the second place bike as they went down into turn three and visibly dipped on the brakes. Is that a riding style or is that the way he's got the bike set up? That's just the way he prefers the bike set up. So uh, great run from Jack Kennedy at the front of this field, but he's under huge pressure here from uh, Cameron Donald, the Australian. Third is Keith Farmer. Josh Elliott hasn't given up in fourth, and it looks like it's a uh, pole man, Damien Byrne in fifth. Oh, Cameron with a big run down the inside there, takes the place, doesn't go wide this time, keeps the throttle closed perhaps, and uh, nothing Kennedy can do about that, great move. No, but they're both hard on the gas now as we run down towards Bridgestone turn, so Cameron Donald will be thinking what he's going to do to block Jack Kennedy, Jack Kennedy's going to think what he's got to do to get past uh, Cameron Donald at the front, so a bit of cat and mouse going on at the front of this field. Looks like Farmer there next up, and he's under huge pressure now from zero, Josh Elliott there, we saw these two battling early on, they're still having a go at this one. And a great run from both these 600 riders. But uh, if you look slightly back behind these guys, the 2,000cc riders, Mark Johnson and Damien Burner, beginning to close right in on the back of these guys. So it's going to be a four-rider battle as we come around here. Oh, look, and it's Mark Johnson. It's a huge high side. 
Big shot for Johnson, just feeding on the power a little bit too quick. Watch it here, gets on the power, back end steps out, grips and spits him up in the air. He's absolutely fine, but he's not going to take any further part in this one. In fact, the red flags are out and the race has been stopped. Well, it can't be any clearer than that. One warm-up lap and four laps of a race, so the dash for cash has got even shorter. Yeah, and a great start from Jack Kennedy in this one. So Jack Kennedy, the man, got the whole shot into the first turn. Jack Kennedy, under the screen, sits up, grabs the brakes. Cameron Donald tries to go around the outside, but there's no way he's going to pass Jack Kennedy from there. Well, I actually thought Farmer was going to launch one of his moves down the inside of both of them there. But even Farmer thought the better of it. He's going to try and stay with them, though, as they come through turn two. So back on board in the frantic action on the 6.75 with Chris Elkin. Frantic work also in the paddock, so uh, what's going on here? Well, there we go, Kennedy leading, but only just Cameron and Wright with him already getting away from Farmer. This is going to be an intriguing battle up front. He doesn't wait, he just throws it down the inside. He's gone wide again. And what a great move by Jack Kennedy. What a great piece of racecraft. He put himself exactly where Cameron Donald needed to be, and he grabbed the lead back in this race. He really did use his head there, uh, almost allowed him down the inside, then came back across him. This is Mondello, this is my local track. I don't think so. No, uh, Jack Kennedy is the king of this circuit, no doubt about that. Although Alistair Seeley might have one or two things to say about that as well. But uh, back at the front, Jack Kennedy still getting harassed from Cameron Donald on the uh, Wilson Craig Honda. Yeah, Donald probably quicker around a lap, but Kennedy using everything he knows here. And he does know this track so well. He's still hanging on by his fingernails as they come up to Dunlop Corner. And it looks like uh, Donald going to have a look down the inside. Doesn't do it on this occasion that Dunlop goes back to the outside, looking for a better run on the way out. And a great run on to the start finish straight there from Jack Kennedy, but Cameron Donald hasn't given up on this one just yet. On the last lap now, Kennedy leaves the door wide open, almost tempting Cameron Donald to go down the inside. He's really confident they're going to have to go at it now. About a mile to run on this one. They're hard on the gas now through the left-hander, heading down towards Bridgestone. Both guys are right on the limit here. Cameron Donald does not want to be beaten by Jack Kennedy. He really going to have to do something special here because Kennedy on form really trying hard as we said he doesn't have the pace but he certainly has the determination and commitment they're coming back just three quarters to go now down into the s's the off camber left hander then they flick it back to the right and then it's up to hill to dunlop for the last time and cameron donald's hot on the heels he's going to have an outbreak and maneuver definitely at dunlop turn for jack kennedy so he moves to the inside jack kennedy defends cameron lets it go the brakes can he get up the inside no he can't jack kennedy hangs on coming out of dunlop corner but there's no checkered flag there's a red flag the result however remains the same Jack Kennedy wins the Adelaide Masters final at Montello Park. A fabulous win after serious injury for the Dubliner. I just said I have to guard my lines everywhere and just be as big as I can be. I, even though I'm not big, but that one is big to get past. And red flag the last corner, but um, I was guard my line the last corner, so maybe I should have got the win anyway. There is one more big Adelaide Masters weekend to come on October 1st and 2nd when the action will be on at Mondello's International Circuit. Make that a firm date in your diary. First weekend in October. See you then.